Hey everyone, this is Walter, and I'm back here today with another story about an internet weirdo. This predates the term wall cow, but I think this guy would definitely qualify nowadays. Two Worlds, apparently also a pretty bad game, is what a man named Ariel Campus called himself. He was an extremely proud something awful goon, to the point that yes, it was pretty cringy. Now the documentation might be a bit rough because all this stuff happened before 2007 when they made this big callout thread that we'll be using a lot. Anyway, let's get started with Classic Something Awful, Two Worlds. Helldump 2000 was a subforum created to keep fighting out of the general bullshit forum on Something Awful. It's been described as such. Ever have that recess game back in elementary school where everybody met on the grass field and just tackled the fuck out of each other with little or no rhyme or reason at all? That's pretty much what Helldump 2000 is. A subforum, Lotex, created on April 10th, 2007 to allow forums users to let out your inner nerd aggression on fellow posters and threads. That is, without mod sass or internet detective stuff. Ideally, Helldump 2000 will remain free of inside jokes, clicks, and what have you, instead remaining a dedicated place for goons to rant, rave, and insult other forum folk over the internet for a long time to come. Yeah, it definitely turned into a mess of clicks and was ultimately pretty short-lived, but it did give us two worlds, the defender of general bullshit. This place was kind of like a proto-Kiwi Farms, I guess. Anyway, let's read a pretty long write-up about two worlds by another goon for a summary. This is the longest thing I've ever posted on SA, or anywhere online. I don't really remember when I started talking to two worlds, but I believe he IM'd me first, and at the time I had no idea who he was. Some time later, he requested I make that avatar for him, and I had to ask why he wanted all of those random characters in the first place. He proceeded to tell me in great detail about the aerial verse, how he has multiple personas, and that each of those characters represents an individual persona in his mind. The Brute, The Tempest, Mr. C, now dead and with no current replacement, Party Man, The Saint, and The Puppet Master. He also talked about Helldump a lot, and how he was the defender of SA, GBS in particular. He also told me about all these weird rules he has for his life, like that he could not cuss or cry until he lost his virginity. The weird thing is, though, he didn't actually consider that he lost his virginity until the third time that he had sex, because he hadn't cummed inside her yet, and they hadn't both cummed at the same time. Anyway, myself and some of the other goons listed, as well as others, often chat on Skype in the evenings. So I invited Two Worlds in, and he more or less became part of the group. It didn't take long to find out that Two Worlds has problems. Lots and lots of problems. You see, he constantly talks about his problems and himself and always wants goony goon advice, although he never ever takes it. He insists on adding people to his Facebook, so after much prodding, a few finally became Facebook friends. One thing to note about Two Worlds is that everyone trolls him. Not just hell dumpers or goons, but people he knows in real life as well. He just kind of drives people to the edge. He has so many insane theories and misguided beliefs that he refuses to change that people he knows just end up insulting him or baiting him to say more ridiculous shit. I used to feel bad for him about this, but now I know why they do it. For instance, he believes in the upper world and the underworld. Homo Lumen and Homo Kathani, he says. The upper world is full of people who go to Walmart, have 2.5 kids, live in suburban homes, go to church, and don't have any secrets at all. They don't have any kinky fetishes, and they don't go on the internet. Then there are the Underworlders. This is essentially a laundry list that ranges from goons, to channers, to child rapists and goth kids. Ariel believes that he is the only person who is between these two worlds. Yeah, that's where the name comes from. And that he constantly has to balance the forces in his life. If you try to tell him, as many have, that most people who seemingly live normal lives have skeletons in their closet, or have some kind of weird sexual fetish, he refuses to believe you and spurgs out about it. He also refuses to believe that people from the internet have real-life problems or lives. Except for him, of course. He's a beautiful little unique snowflake. At first, I took pity on him and I tried to help him. I spent a lot of damn time giving him good advice on things like women, making friends, sex, and job searching. It's amazing how completely naive he is about the most common sense things. After he broke up with his girlfriend, I got onto the subject of sex and he said that he didn't use a condom with this lass. He then said she only slept with 11 guys before me, and she's infertile, because he thought that that means he also cannot get an STD. I told him he should probably get tested, and even looked up directions to a local clinic. He freaked out because the nurses would see him and know what he was coming in for, and no one can know that he's had sex. He asked me if he could just get tested for swine flu or something instead. Fun fact. Actually, it's a horrifying fact altogether. Chris Chan got tested for STDs after having romps in the hay with Barb. 
Ugh. I told him how normal it is to get tested and told him that in the future he needs to wear condoms, to which he had another freakout because the cashier will see him and maybe one of his former students may see him buying small penis condoms. Plus they'll all know he's having premarital sex, which he believes upper world people don't do. He to this day refuses to buy condoms even when I gave him a link to ones he can buy online. He also claimed that Lutheran women don't have premarital sex so he'll just have sex with Lutheran women from now on. He treats non-Lutheran women like chattel. If a girl is non-Lutheran, he has no problem asking them to make homegrown for his own personal enjoyment. When he's mad at you and you're a female, he will threaten to masturbate to your photos, which he saves from Facebook and Awful Yearbook. Yes, this happened to me. One time a goonette talked dirty to him as a joke and he had to leave the call to go jerk off. Yeah, so he's definitely a Me Too story for a number of women at this point. Just imagine threatening to jerk off to the picture of someone who makes you mad. Yikes. Two Worlds is incredibly socially awkward. He doesn't have any real friends to speak of in Decatur, where he currently lives. He says that he has to have balance in his life, so when he gets an opportunity to possibly hang out with someone, he will often turn it down because they are too nerdy, and he feels that if he did one nerdy thing that day, so he needs to balance out his upper world and underworld by hanging out with a brosif type at a bar. He doesn't really like bros, but he wants to be like them, so he figures if he hangs out with them, he will be more like them. One time he was feeling particularly lonely, he wanted our advice on how to set something up at his apartment. He's never had anyone except his ex-girlfriend at his apartment before. So he turned on his webcam and walked us through his apartment so I could give him tips on what needed to be cleaned up slash moved for guests. After this, he wrote up a message to send to some of his nerdy gamer friends on Facebook, inviting them over for a party that weekend. I believe this was a Wednesday. In the past, when he tried to call people to hang out, he would get very distressed if the call went to voicemail or they said that they were busy. We assured him that this wasn't a big deal. I and another goon looked over his note to his nerd friends and it looked pretty chill. Invited them over to play some games, we and drink. He kept asking us over and over again if he sounded gay. He is very afraid of sounding gay. He sent off the message and the response from one of them was that he was busy that weekend, but he knew some other people who might want to hang out. To this, Ariel responded that it was too late and just killed it right there. Another time, there was a celebration in his town, and he was whining that he had no one to go with, but this one girl did express interest. He refused to call her because she was too goony, even though I'm pretty sure she's not a goon. Possibly watches anime, and is the bad kind of fat. She was less heavy than his last girlfriend, and a lot cuter, but whatever. Eventually, he invited her to come to his apartment to watch a movie and hang out. She agreed, even though they barely know each other. So he tells us that she'll be coming over the next night around 8.30pm to watch a movie. The goons he was talking to on Skype lightly joke with him that he's going to get some. He spurgs out as usual. He claims that he doesn't want to get laid because getting laid turned out so badly last time. Eventually we convince him it might be a possibility. Then he says he doesn't want to do anything with his penis involved and that he can show her his magic fingers, claiming she won't be able to walk afterwards. Once he gets her off, he'll simply jerk himself off so she doesn't have to get him off. What is it with these guys and talking about their magic fingers? Comes up in my nice guy videos sometimes. Needless to say, it's frustrating when someone asks you for advice and then constantly doesn't take it. Then when things don't go his way, he calls up crying and sobbing. On top of the crying and sobbing, there is literally no way to make him feel better. He wallows in self-pity. It's like crack for him. I can give him compliments and he says, I am not a good person, don't ever say that. I can tell him good things about himself and he just turns it around. He goes to the bar and gets drunk by himself on three screwdrivers, then comes back and cries some more about how he's going to kill himself via alcohol poisoning. It's probably my own fault, but I wasted a lot of time worrying about the little guy and trying to talk him out of doing something to put himself on the news. The ultimate thing myself and all the goons who were talking to him tried to help two worlds with was getting him to go to a psychiatrist. He went to a therapist a few times, several times he skipped his appointments, and the therapist recommended that he go to a psychiatrist. All he had to do to get medication for his many issues was to have a blood test done, so he said. Much like going to get tested for STDs, he flat out refused to do this. I never understood why, but he simply would not go. Now his insurance from his past job has run out and he has no hope of getting it done. Instead he chooses to believe people who are trolling him diagnosis of Asperger's, so he is now self-diagnosed Aspie. You'll probably notice that there was a very mocking tone about Asperger's and something awful in 2007. These lines probably don't hold up all that well in 2022, but it's just how it was. 
I don't think it's even called that anymore, but the narrative at the time was all these people who were probably just bad socially were self-diagnosing themselves by reading articles online. I still would not recommend doing that. I guess I should address Two Worlds' past career. There's a lot of rumors about this on the forums that I've noticed. He worked as a teacher for one year at a Lutheran high school. He had zero control over his classes and students walked all over him. He couldn't even control a class of two students. As a result, Ariel called Professor Xavier to get the Dreamhelm to help with the Dementor attacks in his class, but the X-Men were too busy to bring Ariel the Dreamhelm because the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier was hijacked by terrorists, from his live journal. Eventually, the students who actually wanted to learn complained to their parents that nothing was getting done in class and the school had to let him go. He has been unemployed up until this month when he got a job as a delivery boy with Papa John's. Although he claims to be between the two worlds of the internet and the real world, I don't know anyone who has more crossover between lives. Most people probably keep their something awful postings and general internet shenanigans out of conversation with real life friends. Ariel does not do this. He talks about something awful on his Twitter and Facebook. He uses internet memes in real life, I know from talking to one of his real life friends. He even goatseed everyone on his Facebook once. He talks publicly on his Facebook about separating his Lutheran friends slash Decatur people from the internet people on his list like they can't see it. Telling him to remove internet people from his friends list is futile, so I told him he could make a separate Facebook just for internet people so that he wouldn't make a gigantic ass of himself in front of friends and family in real life. Another piece of advice he did not take. If you don't happen to know Goatsy, it's an infamous shock image of some guy spreading his ass really wide. It was all over the place when I was a teenager, but if you're one now, just feel lucky if you haven't seen it. Just imagining posting it to my Facebook is threatening to give me an aneurysm. If there's a term for two worlds, it would be too much information. Even when people ask him not to, he shares intimate details about things like his girlfriend's vagina, horrid smell and the gaping size, and the kinky things he would do to her involving household objects such as his toothbrush, remote control, and cell phone. He would also use the horrid smell of her vagina as the reason he couldn't stay hard, even though he would constantly ask her if he was still hard while he was inside her. He would say these things both during and after he was dating her. He never ever talks about anyone but himself. If you try to have a conversation about something, it somehow gets turned into a conversation either about the Arielverse or his problems. Even when I had conversations with him about things we both mutually liked, like comic books, it would get turned into something about him. He never asks how I am doing or what's going on in my life, but I sure as hell know every minute detail of his everyday happenings, whether I wanted to or not. He will blatantly interrupt you mid-sentence and ramble into one of his own problems, totally unrelated to any conversation, and will ignore any attempts to move the conversation away from himself. So after months of this bullshit, everyone just kind of got sick of it, so after he was invited in, we turned the conversation back to something that wasn't Two Worlds. One time we tried to turn the conversation to food and he freaked out and said, is that a meme? He thought we were laughing at him when we weren't, and would freak out over weird shit like one person in Skype saying, WWCXD, what would Charles Xavier do? He yelled at us to shut the fuck up. He told one goon that he was being out of character for this story arc because he stopped giving him advice. When the goon implored what he meant, Ariel said that he was breaking the fourth wall and that Warren Ellis was writing a story about them. This all came to a head one night when one person in Skype told him that he was one world, and that if anyone was two worlds it was not him. He got really depressed about this. The next day he started raging out on Facebook about us. I sent him a message asking him to just remove me from his friends list and telling him I hope he gets psychological help and is happier someday. That afternoon I find out he decided to start calling bosses to get back at us for whatever reason. He called my friend's boss and said that she was harassing him from work, which was totally bogus. So she had to have a conversation with her employer about Ariel Campus. She is a single mom, by the way, and probably the one person out of the group who is the nicest to him out of everyone. This all happened very recently, and I feel like people need to know this shit, that Ariel isn't a poor soul who gets a bad rap on SA, but actually a really big jerk who has mental problems but refuses to get help, and revels in the attention that people give him, good or bad. I guess that's where the passive-aggressive posts come from, because I didn't want to troll the thread with the drama. I'm sorry to shit up your challenge, Abe. I think that's about everything. I really didn't want this to be TLDR, but it's kind of impossible with someone like Two Worlds who holds four-hour conversations with you entirely about himself. Well, that post took a lot longer to narrate than I was expecting, and I'm going to have to continue this next time. The best part is that was just kind of a summary. I haven't gotten into any of the cringiest shit about this guy. We're going to see him getting horny at his job, or as he calls it, having a brute attack. We'll also hear about his visit to the strip club, where his sister works, 
and probably about him getting depressed when his mom starts dating again. And we will definitely be talking about his different personas, especially the brute. There's a lot more to talk about. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have something to say, I sure hope you let me hear it in the comments. This is a very old story, but it's one I enjoy, so hopefully it was entertaining. If you're new here and want more similar content, consider subscribing. Thanks also to my awesome patrons who are supporting me more directly over on Patreon. They help me cover random shit like classic something awful. Well, have a great day, everyone, and make sure you don't talk about anything other than the Aerialverse.